For me as a scientist, there are aspects of what we've learned about nature that seem to be pointers towards God. Not proofs, but pointers. The fact that the universe seems to have had a beginning, the Big Bang, crying out for some explanation of how you can go from nothing to something. The fact that mathematics works so beautifully to describe how matter and energy behave. There's no reason why these simple equations should describe so precisely the way that these particles and photons are, are going to behave themselves. Or the fact that the universe seems to have been fine-tuned to allow the possibility of complexity and even life by the values that certain physical constants have, and which if they did not have, no kind of stable universe would have been possible. All of those things about nature, which so far science has not provided an adequate explanation and may never do so, seems to me to be an interesting set of thought-provoking pointers uh, towards there being an intelligence behind the universe, an intelligence that apparently is pretty interested in mathematics and physics, but also interested in you and me, uh, since this universe was not allowed to come into being in a way that would be sterile and bland for all eternity, but actually has this marvelous potentiality of life itself. So as somebody who has spent my career studying DNA, the hereditary material, it certainly increased my awe of the way in which life works. You and I have within our bodies, in each cell of our bodies, uh, this marvelous DNA script, this instruction book made up of about 3.1 billion letters of a code which is elegant and which we're still just scratching the surface in terms of our understanding. All other living things use that same code, that same DNA instruction book. Of course, they have different instructions in their books, but that is the universal language uh, of life. That language for me as a believer is God's language. Studying DNA for a believer opens your eyes even more uh, to God's creative genius in the way in which all this came to pass. It also does teach us things about life which makes some Christians somewhat less comfortable. For instance, the way in which our DNA is related to that of other species, uh, which strongly supports the idea that there's a common ancestor involved. Uh, for me as a believer, I've found it quite comfortable to put that together with what Genesis teaches us about origins, but I know that is an area of tension. A lot of very sincere people get very worked up about this question of origins, many of them having been taught from the time they first entered a Sunday school <laughs> that there's just one right interpretation of Genesis 1 and 2, and if you don't accept that, your faith is at risk. And so wouldn't we be better off uh, to step back from the tension and say, okay, God has given us an intelligence. God has given us curiosity. I think God expected us to use those things to learn about this marvelous creation that we have been granted. So let's look at the evidence, both from the book of God's words, the Bible, but also from the book of God's works, which is nature, and see what we could learn from both of them and how to put them together into something called truth. It's interesting that so many people who are not familiar with science would say, well, doesn't this sort of reduce uh, your sense of the awesome nature of how this all works as you begin to understand the details? Doesn't that make it all seem kind of mechanical? Not at all. Not at all. Your sense of grandeur only expands as you get more and more of a sense of just how elaborate, complex, and beautiful this is. Oh, my God.